OPC is a communication protocol specifically designed for process control networks. So let's say I had a computer here and this is a an OPC server. It's a place where I can store values. And then if I connect devices on this network, such as a human machine interface, so maybe a display, we also might have a PLC and maybe there's also a another computer like an advanced process control server all right that you could where you can run things and then request data from the OPC server do some calculations and then write values back to the server now you can also connect to process equipment and have that read up through the PLC uh, so the PLC might um, have its own network where you're connecting to valves and pumps and other things and that can also run a, a server sometimes some brands of PLCs or distributed control systems have a server built into that architecture so those values from your process control network are then available to be able to display on an operator screen or available for an advanced control application or machine learning application. Um, a lot of times you use these OPC connections to also dump data into something like a data lake. Okay, so where you don't have to overburden this process control network you can push it out there so if you have like read only access that you need like a business network or okay so for those that are doing business analysis or let's say you have machine learning then you don't have to hit this uh, OPC this network the process control network you can dump it out there and then everybody can read from it so that's a common architecture as well but let's just talk about this oh this uh, OPC it stands for OLE for process control and older versions of this were OPC DA okay direct access and HDA historical uh, direct access so um, or data access so you had these old versions it was built by Microsoft on the uh, DCOM object which was closed source it didn't really have security baked into the the solution so OPC UA is a newer version it stands for universal architecture and it can run on Linux or Windows uh, it's multi-platform it has security built into it we're going to just work with the OPC UA package in Python and also talk about a couple clients that are also possible to use to be able to browse some of the values. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and just start with um, a couple of these. This, these are available on, okay, if you come to the Data Driven Engineering website and then just come down here on the right, it's number three for OPC UA. And these code examples are going to be here. So I just recommend that you come here, get the code, and download it, and then start working with it. Try the server and the client. Okay, so we have server and the client, and I've got those right here. So let's just talk about these. We're going to, first of all, import the OPC UA. We'll do time. We'll also have the syspath insert. Okay, and then also sys and we're going to set up our server here this is going to be opc tcp so tcp ip just the the internet um, connected device we're going to run it locally with port 4840 and we're going to have the free opc ua server now we don't have to do this part but it's just good practice to set up the namespace as part of the configuration and then we're going to get objects node this is where we should put all of our nodes so we're going to create this objects and then you can see we're going to add an object it's going to be called my object 
and then we're going to add a variable as well. And we're going to set that to writable. Now, one of the things that we're going to do is every second, we're going to increment that value by 0.1. And then um, we'll set the value with my VAR dot set value. So this is not typical. A server doesn't typically manipulate the values. It typically just stores them. But I'm just going to put this in there as a ramp into our OPC server. And then we can um, see if we can browse and, and look at those values. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just start um, my OPC UA server. So I'll go to my desktop and then I'll do Python OPC. Uh, see, this one's going to be server.py. If you don't have it installed, then you're going to see an error here. So if you need to, you can come to, I'll just start an Anaconda prompt here. It's just another version of Python. And if you need to, you can do pip install OPC UA. That will install the package for you. And then we're also going to install a client. Now this is just to be able to view the and browse the OPC uh, server values. So we don't necessarily even need this to run our client. OPC UA will do that for us. Also do web client. Okay, so that's one more package where it allows you to browse the OPC values from a web browser. Okay, so I've got all of those installed. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and look at the Python client. So this one, similar to the server, except now we're just going to import the client. We'll connect to the client. We'll get the root node and then print out the children of the root R. And now we'll get um, the value for my VAR. All right, we'll get that value right here and print it out. And then finally, we'll disconnect. So it's just a simple connection and getting some values. We can also put the values back onto the server. So I'm going to just run this here. Um, let me go ahead and change directory to the desktop. And then let's do Python client.py. Now every 0.1 or every one second is going to increment by 0.1. All right, let me run it again. <clears throat> and then you'll see how this variable is ramping. So I did that about 10 seconds later. Okay, so this is okay for you know programs to access the OPC values, but let's think about how we can browse them, browse the hierarchy of variables and be able to maybe make changes to our OPC server through a graphical interface. So the very first thing that we're going to do is come here to Anaconda Prompt. Ooh, there's Anaconda Prompt. And we're going to uh, run this as, first of all, a web client. Okay, so to do that, we're going to do OPC UA dash web client. And I'll run this as on my local host and I'll run it under port 880. Okay, so it's listening at that web address. And if I bring up HTTP, don't put the S there. Okay, 127.001 um, and then port 880. So put the colon right here and then you can see port 880. Now, here's our server. I'll go ahead and connect to it. And then if you expand it, you're going to be able to see the objects, the types, and the views as well. Okay, so there's my object. There's my variable. And then you can see the current value of that variable. So it's a very simple web interface here. There's not much to it. Um, it almost looks like a text editor in a way but it allows you to browse some of the values in a very simple way. And you can run that as a, um, 
a web server and so others that are connected to the network can also browse the OPC values. All right, I'm going to close this one out. All right, I think I just need to restart that. Okay, I still have my server running. I haven't done anything to that. But let's go ahead and just start instead of the web client. Let's go ahead and start the OPC UA client. This one's more of a graphical user interface, similar to something like Matricon or others that also have these free browsers uh, for the OPC values. Um, and OPC servers. I'll go ahead and up here, click connect. Can I switch it to dark mode? All right, and expand this just a little bit more. So some of the things that we could do are to subscribe to data change. And there you can see the value increasing. So as it changes, we get a timestamp and a value. Okay, and you can see that it's just incrementing by 0.1 every second. Now, there's also a graph tab down here where I haven't been able to get this one to work, but I just wanted to uh, you know, add to graph, for example. Looks like it still shows zero. I'm not sure why. Um, should be ramping up. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so there it's uh, ramping up. I'm going to bring this over to this side. Make it just a bit smaller so it fits on there. All right, so there I can see my variable. I've plotted it. I can also go to subscriptions and just watch it. So as I subscribe to these values, I can view them here and browse. Now, OPC is very good with this hierarchy. So you have a, an object and then variables within that object. We also have our server and a number of properties for our OPC server as well. You also have types, okay, event, data types, interface types, and others, and then views if you set them up. Okay, so that's very similar to what was there on the web interface, but you can see it's using uh, some additional features here to create plots or other things similar to other you know commercial OPC browsing tools um, so if you need you can also go to connect options you can select security policies um, you know manage your security mode message security mode select certificates private keys so it does support some of the security features that you'd expect all right, and just a couple other options there as well. Okay, so overall, fairly nice basic tool that works with the OPC UA package, both for an OPC UA client, but also an OPC UA web client. Now, you'll notice um, I also have a Python 3.11. I'm running this right now as 3.9. So sometimes the latest version of Python is not compatible with this package, especially some of these that are GUI driven. And so you just have to watch out for that as you upgrade. This is going to be compatible. Okay, so that's uh, all we had for OPC UA. I'll just give an overview um, here on the, the website and some of the screenshots that show the packages in action all right and you'll see a couple other tutorials here this is modbus mqtt team and uh, websocket as well with uh, number three being opc ua so if you're interested in modbus very similar to opc ua although there's a less on security and less on the types of data that you can transfer all right, and then MQTT, it's very good for Internet of Things, especially for um, the, where the connections are disconnected and then reconnect again. And you know, it's better for uh, if you have this broker, kind of like a server, OPC UA server, but it's better for these kind of disparate devices that are connected in, in these um, D these uh, networks, okay, to subscribe or to uh, publish. 
All right, and then we also have uh, here the WebSocket. We'll give a tutorial on this. Uh, this is kind of a more uh, basic level of communication, probably one of the faster ones, uh, less overhead with some of these others like uh, Modbus or OPC UA or MQTT. Um, you know, it's it actually is the underlying architecture that moves data for some of these these other protocols that you see. So uh, this one also supports things like images or other things. That's not just built into something like Modbus or OPC, um, where it's more focused on numbers. WebSockets more general. You can just move data um, to between computers. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial on OPC UA, and I hope you enjoy it and. Uh, Please leave any comments on the video.